is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, acknowledge him to his honor and to his praise. Now, every knee means that even those that don't believe now someday will bow their knee. It's going to be an exciting time, isn't it? Well, at least it's going to be for us. I don't know how exciting it will be for people who have spent their whole life not believing. Or for that matter, even people who say they believe but who have spent their lives compromising. Let's look at the next verse. So each of us shall give an account of himself, give an answer in reference to judgment to God. Now, let's, let's just look at that soberly for a minute. However many years we have here and how much fun we have, and no matter how great it is, someday each one of us is going to stand before God and give an account of our lives. So if you think it's hard once in a while to hang on to your faith and remain a believer in the world we live in today, you're going to be awfully glad when that day comes. That you don't have anything to be ashamed of. Because all those who believe never come up for condemnation, the Bible says in John 3, 18. All those who believe, I don't even think the things that we give an account to God for are necessarily going to be, am I going to heaven or am I going to hell as believers? I think a lot of it is going to be maybe like, what did you do with your time? What did you do with your money? How did you treat people? Do you have any good fruit to show from your life. You know, everybody today is busy, 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 busy. If I said to you, are you busy? Most of you would say yes. If I said, are you too busy? Most of you would say yes. But you know, God never asks us to be busy. He asks us to be fruitful. I said, God never asks us to be busy. And sadly, I think sometimes we get so busy <laughs> doing nothing except having our busy schedule frustrate us, that we don't end up with any really good fruit from our lives. So I want you to, I want this to be a sila, which means pause and calmly think about that. I want this to be a sila moment for us in this conference this weekend, just as we get started. Someday every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and every man will stand before God and give an account, not of somebody else, but of himself before God. And I want to make sure that all of you watching by television, no matter what country you live in, no matter what language you speak, if you're hearing this message now, especially if you are someone who has not made the commitment to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, to love God with all your heart. I want you to consider now that the time will come when you will stand before God and give an account of your life. And although that is a sobering thought and maybe one that we would prefer not to think about, it is something that we must think about because the day will come. And if I, if I don't share that with you, then I'm not doing my job right before God, and when I stand before him and give an account, he may say, well, you know, why didn't you preach a little more meat to make sure that the people really understood that the day is going to come when they're going to give an account for their life. So I think that's something that we need to be fully aware of. Can anybody smile and say amen, amen, amen. Now, actually tonight I want to talk to you about avoiding deception. And in Matthew chapter 24, a chapter that's about the signs of the end times, which how many of you think we're living in end times? Okay. Well, interestingly enough, every generation has thought that, including Paul's generation. But if Paul thought he was living in the last days, I guess that, that we're living in the last or last days than Paul was. So whenever he's coming back, we're a lot closer than Paul was. And Paul told people that they needed to live carefully. They needed to live soberly and seriously and, 
and not like a bunch of airheads who thought tomorrow was never going to come because tomorrow will come. And he told them to be careful about their behavior, that they were to be lights in a dark world. And I don't think we realize sometimes as believers in Christ, you know, the Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. Well, you know, do you know that as a believer, you are the hope of God's glory? Come on, I'll get that. You are the hope of God ever getting any glory. We, the believers in Jesus Christ worldwide, we are the lights supposed to be in a dark place, the salt of the earth. Believers representing God are what gives life flavor. Without God, there's no flavor. Everything's bland and dull and boring. And it's a sobering thought to think that not only is Christ in me the hope of me ever being glorious, but it's the hope of him getting the glory that he deserves. Another kind of sobering thought. So Jesus said he gave signs of the end times. And one of the things that he said was that deception was going to be great in the last days. He said, now you be careful that no one misleads you. He gave us a responsibility. Well, you know, gee, I, I, I hope I never get deceived. I wish I would have never gotten deceived. No, we can't have that kind of passive attitude. A passive attitude is an open door for Satan to come in and wreck our lives. We have to be active. We have to be aggressive. We have to stay informed. And deception is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing, and there's so much of it. Deception means that we believe a lie. Somehow or another, Satan has convinced us of something that's not true, but if we believe it, it becomes true for us. And I would venture to say, and please don't be offended when I say this, but it's possible that almost everybody in this building, I always say almost everybody, because then if somebody wants to get offended by it, you can think you're the one I'm not talking to. So I would venture to say that almost everyone in the building is probably deceived in some area of your life, even right now including me. There's something that you may think is true, so for you it's become your reality, although it's not true at all. You may think that you've done something you can't be forgiven for, but that's not true. However, if you believe that, then you'll never receive the forgiveness that's already been provided for you. Because everything that we receive is through believing. So if Satan can get us to, re to believe the wrong thing, then we're constantly receiving from him rather than receiving from God. And we just get confused. We don't even know what's wrong with us. If you believe that you're unlovable, if you expect to be rejected, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. We've opened the door for the enemy, and he'll come in and wreck our lives. Well, the only answer to deception is, guess what? Truth. I don't know that we even begin to realize how valuable this book is. I love to hold this book up before the world and just think about the millions of people maybe right now that are just looking at this wonderful book. People in Africa, people in India, people in Asia, people in Europe, people all over the world, people back in the backwoods of the Amazon jungle, people in grass huts, people everywhere. And I just want to tell you, this is the hope of the world right here, the Word of God. Jesus said, if you continue in my Word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. What an awesome thing. That was one of the first scriptures that God gave me some understanding on back in 1976 when I became a serious Christian. And I always say when I became a serious Christian because I was a Christian a long time before I became a serious one. And I believe that, that I knew enough of Christ. I understood salvation by grace. I really believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that if I would have stayed, even in that condition, I would have went to, to heaven when I died. 
but I always like to say it like this. I had enough of Christ to stay out of hell, but not enough to walk in victory. So let me ask you, how much of Jesus do you want in your life? Do you want just barely enough to get squeaked by every day and hopefully sneak in the back door of heaven? Or would you really like to be a light in a dark world? Would you really like to be used? Would you like to be fruitful? Would you like to be someone that God can be proud of? Then you know what that means? There's two paths that we can walk as believers. The narrow path and the broad path. The narrow path leads to life. The broad path always leads to destruction. Now, the broad path is easier to stay on, obviously. <laughs> Got a lot of space there for you and all your fleshly baggage. All, you know. Get on the narrow path and there's some stuff that has to start going because there's no, no room for that. It's so important, I really believe, that it's so important that we begin to take a more sober look at how we're living and what we're saying to the world and what the church is saying to the world. And we need to, each one of us, make sure that we're doing our utmost to glorify God through our lives every single day. Amen.